Hello and welcome back to another video on my channel. This is going to be a very basic video that was requested by one of the comments uh, under my last video. I'm going to explain to you how to diagnose coverages. Now there are a couple of coverages that your opponent can throw at you and it's important to know which one he is calling. First I'm going to talk, uh, tell you which coverages exist. Obviously there's man coverage, there's cover 3 sky or cover 3 in general, cover 2. They often called Tampa 2 or something like that. Um, and there is cover 4. Now there is also cover 9 and cover... Um, where is it? Cover 6. But you don't see that uh, those very often. We're going to start by identifying whether it's man coverage or zone coverage and then go from there. Now also there are a couple of wrinkles that your opponent can throw into how his coverage looks. But we're going to get to, uh, get to that a bit later. We're going to start with a man blitz. I'm going to show you how a man blitz looks. So, a man blitz is pretty much, uh, you can ident identify a man blitz, first of all, by many linebackers at the line of scrimmage. Now, they also can pretend to be blitzing and then drop into zone coverage, but that's a bit more advanced. Most people at the low levels, if they're blitzing, they're telling you that they're blitzing. Also, every one of the wide receivers is covered up by DB. Or linebacker, that could also be possible, but mostly DBs. If we're in gun bunch, you see that across from every wide receiver, there is a defensive back, either a cornerback or a safety. Now, another way that you can identify whether it's man coverage or zone coverage is you can motion and see who follows out. That is one way you can motion this wide receiver. Or if you still have a lot of time, you can motion cook out. Jesus. And in reality, a linebacker should follow. But in this case, that's not happening apparently. But if we move him across, for example, we then also can see that there is somebody who is directly across from him. He's going to mirror his movement. That's a clear indicator of zone coverage, um, of man coverage. Now let's talk about zone coverage. Zone coverage. I'm going to go into cover three. You see that this now looks wildly, uh, wildly different. Not every wide receiver is directly covered up with a, with a um, DB directly in front of him. And now if I motion him across, you see that the guy does not follow. That's how we know that it's make uh, zone coverage. I'm getting mixed up with you guys, I'm sorry. Now, let's talk about the different kinds of zone coverage. When diagnosing which coverage it is, pre-snap you want to see how the DBs are lined up. If there is one safety in the middle of the field, that means that it's either a cover three or a cover one. A cover one is a man coverage with one deep safety in the middle of the field. This is a really easy tell. If you see one uh, one guy in the middle of the field, that basically means that it's either a cover three or a cover one. Most likely it's gonna be a cover three. Now let's get into something that is a bit more difficult to distinguish. Cover 2 and cover 4. This is how cover four, uh, cover 2 looks. You have two safeties in the middle of the field and two cornerbacks outside. And it's basically... It's... Uh, you can see how it is. You have two safeties up top and two cornerbacks down. At, more, more so to the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> That's a cover 2. Now, I don't know if I, if I said my audible. Do I have cover 4? No, I don't. I gotta come out in cover 4 to show you how similar they look. Cover 4, drop show 2. Gonna call that. We're gonna come out in another gun bunch play. And now if we look at this, this looks really similar to cover 2. Wrong controller. So this is a cover 4. Look at the alignment of the safeties and cornerbacks. And this is a cover 2. The only real difference is that the cornerbacks move down two steps compared to the cover four. That is a really, really difficult thing to notice. Now, a lot of the times, uh, when I'm not sure what, the, what coverage my opponent is in, I'm running a play that beats any coverage. For example, that would be um, this play right here, and I would put him on a slant, and then I would just read it out. If I don't know what my opponent is running as a, as his coverage, I'm running something that can beat any coverage. If your opponent doesn't know what play is coming, you can beat any coverage with that play. But if I know that he is in a cover 2, or if I feel like 
and know his tendencies and he's gonna be in a cover two right here. Then I'm running a play to specifically beat cover two. So and that's why this is important. At the beginning of the game, you don't really know what your opponent likes to do. So you have to know what which plays beat which coverages. And then as the game goes along uh, goes on, you have to understand how to read a coverage and know that okay in this sit situation he's very likely to call a cover three which again is pretty simple to notice like this is how cover three looks compared to a cover two the difference is really easily t uh, noticed let's talk about something other baseline so this is how cover three would, would look on not baseline but if your opponent baselines which is triangle and then the left stick to the right this looks really similar to a cover 2 or a cover 4. Now if I switch that to a cover 2, tempo 2, you'll see that no one moves. And then this is where things become tricky because if it looks like that, he, my opponent could be in any coverage. He could be in a cover 2, he could be in a cover 4, he could even be in man coverage because even if I call him man coverage and I'm baseline, that's a look for man coverage if I now rebase the line. You can't tell that, that he's in main coverage. This is then where things get difficult, and this is then where you have to really pay attention to what your opponent is doing. Just know that there is a way to make a cover 3 look like a cover 4 and a cover 2 and so forth. This is why it's important to make a post-snap read, because now this looks like it's a cover, uh, it's a cover 2. But in reality, it is a cover 3. So then, if I run my play to beat cover two and it's not open then I'm throwing a pick so this is why it's important to recognize that what you see pre-snap is not always the, th uh, the same thing that you see post snap it might seem that way but if your opponent baselines there's really no way of knowing um, basically what I'm saying is it's important to also look at the play after the snap uh, it might sound obvious to a lot of people, but I'm trying to do this video as basic as possible. Um, but yeah, there's not much more to that. Just know that you have to make a pre-snap read that looks like a cover 4. And now if I snap the ball, it's actually a cover 3. Just don't always trust the thing that you see pre-snap and you'll be fine. If you want to know how to beat each coverage after recognizing it, then watch the 40 minute video I did on the Gun Bunch offense. It's the best offense in the game. Um, It's one of the top two. One of the top two. I don't actually know if it would, which would be in the, the other one in the top two. I don't know. Gun Bunch, the best offense in the game. If you want to know how to beat coverages after you, rec you recognize which one it is, then watch that video. I appreciate your time. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to subscribe. Bye.